Here I have sine x plus 2 sine x cosine x is equal to 0. I'm going to solve this equation by factoring. I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor, which is sine x. Watch what happens when I do that. I'll factor out a sine x. What's left in this term is a 1 plus, when I factor sine x from this term, what's left is 2 cosine x. Just like if I was solving a quadratic equation in algebra. So I have the product of this factor, sine x, and this factor equal to 0. So to solve this equation, I'm going to set each factor to 0. So over here, I'll get sine x is equal to 0. And over here, I'll get 1 plus 2 cosine x is equal to 0. Well, this tells me that x must be what? Where is sine x equal to 0? Well, let's take a quick look at uh, the graph of y equals sine x. So I'm going to draw the graph in right here real quickly. y equals sine x looks like this. There's 1. There's negative 1, 2 pi, and pi. Okay, where is sine x equal to 0? It's 0 here, here, and here. So sine x is equal to 0 implies that x is equal to 0 or pi or 2 pi. Now, how about this? 1 plus 2 cosine x equal to 0. Well, I have to solve for cosine x. I'll add negative 1 to both sides, then divide by 2. Cosine x is equal to negative 1 over 2, negative 1 half. So that tells me that the reference angle is going to be, when is cosine 1 half? Well, cosine is 1 half at 60 degrees. So the reference angle is going to be 60 degrees, which is the same as pi over 3. So again, I'll draw a little diagram here to help me out. Okay, I want 60 degrees. Cosine is negative where? Well, cosine goes with the variable x, and x is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So here and here is where cosine x is negative. So I want to draw in a reference angle of pi over 3 in quadrants 2 and quadrant 3. So I'll draw in the reference angle here, 60 degrees which is pi over 3, and the reference angle down here, 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. Okay, so what are my two angles? My one angle right here is this, which will be pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. And then this angle, which is going to be pi plus pi over 3, so 3 pi over 3 plus pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. So this angle, which is going to be pi minus pi over 3, and this angle, which is going to be pi plus pi over 3, or 4 pi over 3. Okay, so where are all my solutions between 0 and 2 pi, including 0 but not including 2 pi? Well, up here I got 0 pi I'm going to leave that one out because of this strictly less than symbol. So x is equal to 0 pi, and x is equal to 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Oops, a little malfunction with the recorder again. Let's look at the end of this problem. Here we had our solutions for x between 0 and 2 pi. They turned out to be 0 and pi, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. Okay, now we want to write all solutions. Well, first when we look at this 0 and pi, Remember that it came from this graph, looking at where this graph of y equals sine x crossed the x-axis. Well, that happens at 0, pi, 2 pi. It'll happen again at 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. In this direction, negative pi, so on and so forth. So we can just sum up all solutions like that this way, pi times k. It's going to cross the x-axis every pi units on the x-axis. So let's just say pi times k. That takes care of all solutions that come from these two right here. Now, for all solutions from these two, we just add on multiples of 2 pi like we did previously. Multiply by k right here, where k is an integer, and you get all the angles that are coterminal with these two angles here that are between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so individual solutions between 0 and 2 pi, here's all solutions to that equation. All right, let's look at another problem.
So here I have an equation that's quadratic in cosine theta. It's 2 cosine squared plus 11 cosine theta equals negative 5. Looks like a quadratic equation, so I'll put it in standard form and see if it factors. So 2 cosine squared theta plus 11 cosine theta plus 5 is equal to 0. When I add 5 to both sides, I get plus 5 over here equals 0 on the right side, so I've got it in standard form for a quadratic equation, just as if it was a quadratic equation in x, but instead it's a quadratic equation in cosine theta. Now let's see if we can factor this. I hope it factors. If it does, these first two terms here, when I multiply them, I'll get 2 cosine squared. So how about 2 cosine theta and just cosine theta? Now, the two numbers that I put here have to multiply and give me 5, and then when I multiply inside and outside, I have to get 11 cosine theta. So let's try positive 1 and positive 5, because I know I can multiply those and get positive 5. Inside, I have 1 cosine theta. Outside, 10 cosine theta. That adds up to 11 cosine theta, so I factored it. Let's set our factors equal to 0. 2 cosine theta plus 1 equals 0 or cosine theta plus 5 equals 0. Well, look, I can take care of this real quickly. Watch. I'll add negative 5 to both sides. Cosine theta is equal to negative 5. Guess what? That can't happen. Cosine theta always has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. It can never be negative 5. So I'm not going to get any solutions over here. So for that part of the equation, I'll just write the empty set. No solutions. Let's go over here. I want to solve for cosine theta. So I'll add negative 1 to each side, then I'll divide both sides by 2. So I get cosine theta is equal to negative 1 half. That tells me that the reference angle for theta is, well, where is cosine theta 1 half? At 60 degrees. So the reference angle is 60 degrees, and then it's a cosine function, which is negative. Well, cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3 because cosine goes with the variable x, and x is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So let me go over here for a second, and let's see if we can write down a little diagram. Here's 60 degrees in quadrant number 2, and then here is going to be 60 degrees in quadrant number 3. So what are the two angles I get out of this? Well, first of all, I get this angle, which will be 180 degrees minus 60 degrees. So 180 minus 60, which is going to be 120 degrees. And then I get the second angle, which is this, which will be 180 degrees, right, over to there, plus 60 degrees. And so that's going to come out to be what? 240 degrees. Okay, so I get 240 degrees there. So what about my solutions? Well, if the reference angle is 60 degrees, cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. I get these two angles right here. Theta is equal to 120 degrees, or theta is equal to 240 degrees. Those are all my solutions between 0 and 360 degrees. If I want all solutions, then I simply add on plus or minus 360 degrees times k. And that gives me all solutions to that equation. So quadratic equation in cosine, we factor it just like we would if we were factoring a quadratic equation in algebra, set the factors equal to 0. That gives us the reference angle, and from that we can find the solutions. Uh, I just looked at the tape and saw that I wrote plus or minus 360 times k, plus or minus 360 times k. I don't know where that came from, maybe the quadratic formula. But the way we're writing them here is 120 plus 360 times k and 240 plus 360 times k. Plus or minus is going to give you the same thing, but uh, if we haven't been writing that minus sign, don't want to confuse you. Sorry about that.